Now I'd like to acquaint you with the I2C serial communication standard. We'll take a look at the I2C Express VI options, some terminology, and signaling waveforms. I2C is an abbreviation for Inter-IC. IC is an abbreviation for Integrated Circuit, and that's where the two I's come from. Now the I2C bus standard was developed by Philips Semiconductor, which is now called NXP Semiconductors. I2C bus has only two signal wires, one for serial data, designated SDA, and a second for serial clock, designated SCL. Because we have a dedicated serial clock line, this is a form of synchronous communication. I2C bus supports bidirectional data transfer, although it's not simultaneous as in SPI, for example. It supports multiple master devices, and all data transfers are byte-oriented, that is, 8 bits. We have a wide range of possible bus speeds, ranging from standard mode at 100 kilobits per second, all the way up through 5 megabits per second. MyRio supports the first two, standard mode 100 kilobits per second and fast mode 400 kilobits per second. Please see the I2C bus specification and user manual for complete details. This is linked in the video description. Now let's start taking a look at the signal definitions and terminology. We have one device designated as the master and a second designated as a servant. We have two wires linking the two together. The data line is called SDA for serial data and the clock line is called SCL for serial clock. If you had multiple devices connected for a single master, you simply join all of the SDA lines together and all the SCL lines together. It's a very simple standard in terms of wiring, no need for additional chip select signals of any sort. All of the addressing of the peripheral devices is handled via the SDA line. Now, all devices signal each other by pulling down SDA and SCL. That means we always need two external pull-up resistors on SDA and SCL. Typically, we use 10K for 100 kilobits per second and 2K resistors for 400 kilobits per second. MyRio has the 2K internal pull-up resistors already built in, so no need to attach your own devices. Now, each device can serve as a transmitter and as a receiver and can switch roles during a single bus transaction. The device designated as the master is responsible for initiating and terminating the bus transaction, and it's also responsible for generating all clock pulses. The servant device listens for its address to be called by the master and then responds as necessary. All right, now let's dig into the details of the signaling waveforms. Both SDA and SCL lines are normally high impedance lines. With the pull-up resistors in place, then the idle condition is both high for these lines because the external resistors are pulling those lines high. The start condition designated with an S occurs when SDA drops low while SCL is high. After the start condition, the master begins transmitting the data byte. It does so by transmitting the most significant bit first, and you have a single serial clock pulse per bit. It's important to note that the data bit must be stable the entire time that SCL is high. Here's the remaining seven bits going all the way down to the least significant bit. During this portion of the transfer, the master is the transmitter and the servant is the receiver. Now after the eighth data bit, the master generates a ninth clock pulse. Then the master releases control of the SDA line and allows the servant to pull this line low to acknowledge. If the servant does not pull it low, leaving the line high, then this is called the not acknowledge condition or NAC condition. A NAC can be generated due to several possible reasons. If their peripheral is missing altogether, it cannot pull the line low. If it's busy or perhaps full, then it can signal that condition. Or if it's confused by the data that is received or otherwise not working properly, it would leave that line high. And that way the master can detect that. 
Now at this point, the master resumes control of the serial data line. At this point, the servant actually has the option to hold the serial clock line low to force the master to wait if needed. At this point then, the master can send SCL high and then raise SDA high, and that signals the end of the transaction with a stop condition. Once the stop condition has been generated, then the bus goes back to the idle state. Now let's take a look at the LabVIEW MyRio I2C Express VI and see how that relates to some of the waveforms that we've just seen. You can choose the connector, either A or B. This is a reminder of the pin numbers for the I2C signals. You have the three different modes, and then you also have the two possible data rates for the bus, standard mode and fast mode. Now, depending on how you configure the mode, you will get three different appearances to the Express VI, one indicating bytes to write, another to indicate bytes to read, and then bytes to write and read, so you can do both at the same time. Each one has a so-called slave address. Slave is just an older styled word for the servant device. Let's take a look at three data transfer examples based on these three possible modes. We can begin with a start condition and then generate a 7-bit address followed by a read-write bit. If that bit is high, it's a read operation. If it's low, we're doing a write operation. Note that we're always, though, doing an 8-bit transfer. The servant doesn't acknowledge. At this point, the master can follow it up with another data byte, which is acknowledged, another data byte, which is acknowledged, and then finally we stop and end the transaction. So that's a, a basic write operation for multiple bytes. A read operation looks like this. We do a start, send the address, signal a read operation, serve it acknowledges, and then begins transmitting its own 8-bit data. At this point, the roles are reversed and the master has to then signal acknowledges. When the master is done with the data transfer, it signals this with a, a knack or not acknowledge and then issues a stop condition to end the transaction. Finally, if we were doing a combination of write and read in the same transaction, that would be implied by this mode over here. We begin with a start, send the address, do a write operation, get the acknowledge, send data, get an acknowledge, and in this case the data might be the, say, the first address of values to read from a serial memory. Now the only way that we can get back to read mode is if we send another address, but that always has to be preceded by a start condition. This is an example of what we call repeated start. The waveform timing is exactly the same, that is SCL high dropping SDA, but at this point we send the same address but now designate a read operation. The servant will then do an acknowledge and at this point it begins transmitting data as we did in the previous read example. Each of these is followed by the acknowledge and finally a knack at the end to signal the end of the data transfer. This is assuming that the memory auto increments its data address.